Ok, gracias. Internet. It is 20 past 8 in the morning and welcome back to the channel. Welcome here in Chacawa in Mexico. Before I go, I'll show you on the map what the plan is. This is, by the way, the room where I stayed last night. You gotta check out the bathroom, which was... Well, yeah, that also can, can use a little bit of a renovation, perhaps. But anyway, to the point. Um, today I am riding to Oaxaca which is, well, the capital, I guess, of the state Oaxaca that I already entered. And I'm just looking at this map of Mexico and thinking, oh, this country is so big. Because <laughs> I'm now right over here uh, on the coast and Oaxaca is over there. Uh, so you think, ah, it's only this big. And I mean, well, this is the whole of Mexico. But I think it's almost 400 kilometers. I, I don't know exactly. I'll have to... Um, fire up my my gps to see exactly but it, it's far like <laughs> 350 yeah somewhere in between 350 and 400 i think so i better get going because it's going to be a very long uh, day of riding so let's go okay so it says 330 kilometers but that's of course not true because i made this route when i was thinking that i was going to leave from that other beach which is uh 50 kilometers from here uh, I don't have to back the, backtrack the entire 50 kilometers, but probably at least 30. So yeah, that would make it something like 360 kilometers for today. I'm actually really looking forward to a long day of riding. And uh, right now it's still, uh, temperature is still very nice. Not yet so hot. That's good. Passing through a small village right here in the mountains. Look at this amazing setting. Wow. This is kind of the first, well, kind of, it is the first town I come across on this route. Very cute. Quite a bit higher up now, it's at 1800 meters, so I kept on climbing.
Okay, so this day is taking a very unexpected turn. So I'm riding down this road on my way to Oaxaca and I pass this little shop here and it's a motorcycle shop and you know, I don't know why, but I was like, you know what? Let me just stop and ask because <laughs> you know about the whole tire search, right? Um, but besides the tires, I'm looking for other parts as well. And for some reason, well, I probably know why, this motorcycle Honda doesn't have it in Mexico, Guatemala and all of that. So even though you get Honda dealers everywhere, they do not have anything for my motorcycle. But anyway, so I contacted every single Honda dealer in Mexico. Yes looking for the tires uh, but I, I mean for the tires i contacted everybody every shop but anyway because another thing that happened that i didn't talk about anymore was that when i brought alaska for the 12,000 kilometer service in el salvador um, i wanted to do a full uh, chain and sprocket uh, change but they actually didn't have the rear sprocket they thought they had and then it turned out that that one didn't fit so I didn't have a choice but to just not change the rear sprocket. But then of course, when you put a new chain and you don't change your sprockets, then the chain is gonna wear much quicker, which uh, turned out to be the case. So already after, what is it, 4,000 kilometers, that brand new heavy duty DID chain got stretched. Um, which way? So I am desperately looking for this rear sprocket, not finding it anywhere. By the way, I'm now looking for an ATM <laughs> to get cash because um, I have to pay with cash. Ah, here. I cannot pay with credit cards in the shop, so I just have to get some cash because I don't have enough cash on me to pay for new tires and chain and all of that. Hola! Okay, I got money. So anyway, where was I in the story? Um, that I couldn't get the rear sprocket changed in El Salvador. So then my brand new chain worn a lot quicker. So now I'm back to square one. I have to change them again. And basically the thing is I still could not find anywhere the rear sprocket. Not one single Honda dealer has anything. Um, ciao. Basically, I've been searching for parts everywhere. Also, for example, front brake, brake pads that I couldn't get in El Salvador either. Anyway, a lot of things. Um, but mostly, I mean, for tires, I've been searching the longest by far. Anyway, I see this small shop and I'm like, what the heck, you know, let me just give it a go. It is run by this really nice lady. And um, so I say, hey, do you have like a, a rear sprocket this size with the chain and everything? Turns out she has a sprocket that fits my bike. The only thing is that standard, it comes with a 40 tooth and this is a 38. So it's gonna change the way Alaska rides significantly. I don't know, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, how different she's going to behave. Um, the most important thing is that I have a sprocket that fits, honestly. I'm so desperate for that. So I got that one and then I was like, let me just ask for tires. Surely she doesn't have anything. And will you have it? She has a rear tire that fits, a front tire that fits. It's kind of mixing and matching. They're not the same brand. Um, where was the shop again? They're not the same brand and um, yeah, anyway, the sizes are all a little bit off, I guess. 
But it will fit, it will work. <laughs> so crazy. And then she also has brake pads. Oh, here's the shop. Look, look at this. It's a tiny little shop. It's tiny. They have everything. <laughs> it's bizarre. And now, gracias. <laughs> Ciao. There are my tires. Now I'm just going to the other side of the road. And then this guy is going to fit everything for me. Yeah? Okay. Okay, I keep on running back and forth between the shop and the place where they're now working on everything because it turned out that the rear sprocket did not fit after all. Um, they literally searched the entire shop. It's been honestly the most helpful people I've met in a long time. And now we found another sprocket, which is a 42, 42 tooth, teeth, whatever. So that's kind of a normal standard of 40 or 42 for this bike. Uh, the only thing is, it, it's not, I mean, it's not an original part, of course. So it doesn't fit 100%, but they think when they put the, um, how you say, when they put the screws in, it should sit tight and it shouldn't be a problem. So let's hope so because I don't have any other solution right now. That's already my new tire there on the rear. They've already fitted my new sprocket. Back at the shop because now it turns out <laughs> the chain is not long enough. We're missing two links. Ah, this is más largo. This is más largo. Okay. Trae el otro. Okay. Voy a y voy a traer el. Okay. 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 Gracias. Es más largo. Dicen. Okay, gracias. In with the new chain, out with this one, the short one. Shame is that the longer one is not as good quality, so it's not a heavy duty like this one. But hey, I can't have it all. I can't have it all. So I just take whatever I can get, whatever fits. <laughs> I must take it. Can't be picky, because then you're left with nothing. And everything is the same price. <laughs> So I swapped out the two change, same price. I swapped out two different sprockets, same price. So I've already paid for everything and if something is wrong, I can just change it for whatever. <laughs> so they're now working on the front tire, but I can already show you the difference between the rear. So that's my old tire and this is the new. So you can see the entire profile is very, very different. See the difference? And so, this new tire, I have never even heard of this brand, Salus Max. I have no idea, but uh, at least it's the right size, it doesn't even say type or anything. Okay, all ready to go with my new tires here have a look at that front oh oh well, it's mostly of course the rear that I'm happy with but new front new rear let's see how I get on new sprocket new chain oh, I can already feel the difference in height of course because my they're a bit taller these tires 
I am so pleased with myself. <laughs> I mean, oh, you have no idea how I have been struggling and struggling to get these parts. Oh man, it's been so frustrating. So then when you finally manage in just the most random shop ever, ah, that feels good. Now I'm quickly going to make my way to uh, Oaxaca um, because it's already uh, 10 past 6 so it's going to be uh, dark soon I am in Oaxaca I am here, I'm here and it's still daylight so that's good I'm going to try and uh, find a place to stay quickly Tiene habitación Solo Ah, no hay privada. Ah. Voy a buscar otro lugar. Gracias. Yeah, I, I don't do dorms anymore. <laughs> Sleeping into one in one room with a bunch of strangers. I've done that for many years in the past when I was younger. But I'm not going to do that anymore. Over this. Okay, I'll find another place. So I found a place to stay, and Alaska is parked just uh, the next block in a parking garage. And well, I'm actually uh, kind of on a food hunt <laughs> for some typical Oaxacan food. You're beautiful. What a beautiful cat. Yeah, you're beautiful. Right, I'm getting distracted by beautiful little kitties. This is what I came for. Markets 20th of November. Okay, I enter straight at the meat market. <laughs> I'm gonna skip this part though. I'm gonna head a little bit further in. This is what I came in for. This Tlayuda. Hola. And puedes sentarme. No, you want salado. Sí. Gracias. This is the one. Oh, gracias. Wow. So this basically looks like a giant pizza, but it's not a pizza, of course. So this is a typical dish in Oaxaca. It's called a tlayuda. tlayuda. And basically it's a massive tortilla. And then they put a creamy bean mixture and then layers of quesillo. Quesillo is a Oaxacan cheese. And then they put different types of toppings. Gracias. Uh, Gracias. Like some vegetables and I got different types of meat. I think chorizo and uh, beef. And they either serve it open like this or they fold it. Kind of like a pizza calzone or like a quesadilla, I guess. Oh, it's extremely good. So the base, the tortilla, is very thin and crispy or crunchy. And then the cheese, that quesillo, it's actually a type of string cheese. See, it's kind of like stringy. Very nice. Okay, well, I can eat like an absolute pig, but even I could not finish that plate. <laughs> that was massive. Anyway, I'm now off to another market uh, because I'm now looking to try also a specific drink from Oaxaca. It's called uh, Tejate. Tejate. I should be able to get it somewhere here. Yeah, how are they? Hola. 
¿Es este jate? Ah, sí. Sí, un vaso, por favor. ¿Chico? Sí, chico. ¿Cuánto vale? 17. 17. Okay, so it looks perhaps a little bit dubious. <laughs> so this tejate is a pre-Hispanic drink and it's made from toasted mice, fermented cacao beans, some uh, toasted uh, pits of uh, tropical fruit and cacao flower, the flowers of the cacao uh, tree. And then they grind it into a paste and then slowly mix it with water. Okay, that's how they make it. Now let's, let's try it out. I just don't know what's that stuff like floating on top. Probably the paste. Yeah. Well, as expected, it tastes, it tastes like something I've never tried before. Somehow, it, yeah, you can taste the cacao for sure. But it's good. It's good. I quite like it. Wow, that was really good. I actually finished the whole thing. Are you chapulines? These are chapulines. Yes. This or this? What is it? What is it? Ah, it's with chile and without chile. Ah, without chile, por favor. No. Por qué? Solo para probar. Sí. Gracias. Well, what better way to end this? Uh, little food quest in Oaxaca with some chapulines as desserts and chapulines are uh, toasted grasshoppers I just bought a small bag with, with a couple of them so yeah they still have uh, well, everything on them let's try them yeah no that's not good <laughs> no I'm not a fan of these chapulines not quite my thing, I have to say. Anyway, I am going to end this video now. That was a, a small peek into life in Oaxaca. Mostly the food <laughs> in Oaxaca. So I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below and then I'll see you in the next video.